We brought you an investigation about two weeks ago into an officer who had been rehired from the same department that he was fired from 23 years ago, the Baton Rouge Police Department. Since our investigation, Officer Tremel Neldare has now been added to the Brady List at the District Attorney's Office. Plus, we sat down with one of Neldare's victim's mother on his rehiring. The feeling that I had that night when he came home from that incident, I felt it. I'm like, what, what are you talking Who? Who are you talking who, who? Who did they hire back? How did they hire him back? Why did they hire him back? Why? Who let this happen? Angel Matthews is a mother who is hurt and angry. Let's take you back to July 29th, 2000 for a traffic stop around midnight on Florida Boulevard. Matthews then 19 year old son Brandon Butler was the driver that night. Baton Rouge police officer Tremel Neldare was the officer. Butler was told to get out of his car and to get on his knees. And he said to Brandon, um, if I put my, he said his in his face because he put Brandon's face to him. If he put it in his mouth, would he bite it? And kept, Brandon said he kept calling me a little b When Brandon, I think at some point, was looking at him, he asked him if he, you know, what you want to do, you want to fight me, jump on me or something of that sort. And, and Brandon said, no, he said, I know better than to fight a police officer. Less than four weeks later, Officer Neldare was the subject of yet another internal affairs investigation. This time, the victim was a woman, and the claim was sexual harassment. Greg Ferries was the Baton Rouge Police Chief at the time. He spoke to Unfiltered with Kieran about the investigation from 2000. He intervened in what appeared to be a verbal um, domestic argument and used that opportunity to go in and inappropriately place his hands on the female that was um, involved in the argument and to um, make suggestions and invitations to her that were, in, in our opinion, quite inappropriate. What did you do? I terminated him. Why? For the conduct that we just discussed. Records obtained by Unfiltered with Kieran show that after Nelder was fired from BRPD, he went to work at the Point Capee Parish Sheriff's Office in 2002. He worked with the Sheriff's Office for three years before a break. He would be hired back again in 2006 for five months. Both times, records show he voluntarily resigned. From there, he moved to the Port Allen Police Department. But in 2010, records obtained by Unfiltered show before he could be terminated, he resigned. As time moved along, both victims continued on with their lives. The woman who was sexually assaulted buried what happened and told us she simply did not want to relive any part of it. Brandon Butler has since grown from a teenager into a working man. What does Brandon do professionally now, though? He is a Baton Rouge City police officer. Unbelievable, huh? Yeah, well, but to say he wanted to be a police officer in Baton Rouge, I was shocked. And I said, why? Although we look now, 23 years later, to see the awesome young man he is, that he, the man that he has become, that situation could have caused him to take a whole different turn towards the law. Not even from a black or white, just the law, period. Why should I respect the law when the law doesn't respect me? Now fast forward to March 2023. Neldare was hired back to the Baton Rouge Police Department as a full-time officer back working the streets. How did his victim and now Officer Brandon Butler find out? He found out in roll call. Your son found out in roll call the officer who abused him was back on his own shift. That he was going to be coming to that shift. Yes. What went through him? He should not have to worry about his abuser being able to come to the same place for which he was dismissed for misconduct? Where does that happen? Where? And that feeling is here. It won't go away. It won't. It will not. Got some good guys out there, you know, that we should be proud that they think enough of Baton Rouge to serve us because that's what they do. But when I read his testimony from that day, everything just came back. I saw, I, I revealed the marks on his neck. His, Brandon has green eyes. His green eyes were just, they were just so red from, 
from the tears just in his face was just red from where he had held him down on the car. Brandon's mother says her son kept the news to himself for a while, unsure how to even tell his mother. Since our report, she says no one from administration has reached out to her or her son. But what signal does it send to me, to Brandon, the other mothers, wives, or whomever, grandmothers, or whomever who has men and women that's on the force, and this is what they bring back in to be a part of their brotherhood? to a part of their family, someone who has done this, what does that say? It's power abuse of the badge. It's a disgrace to the badge. It's a disgrace to those guys. It's a disgrace to those women that are out there every day, leaving their families to come out and protect us. Our investigation found new officers start at pay step five, or roughly 41,000. The highest an officer can make is pay step 19, or close to 62 grand. Naildare started at pay step 16. Officers who have been working for BRPD for decades are making well below pay step 16. What about the fact that he started at pay step 16? I am sure it's an insult. Not right. And I'm talking to you because it's just not right. Since our investigation, Officer Nelder has been added to the Brady List, a list the district attorney's office maintains of any law enforcement officials who have had untruthful issues upheld. Did Baton Rouge police make you aware that they had rehired Officer Tramel Nelder? Not uh, initially, no, but as uh, I've received notice, there was an officer. We called and verified his employment and we're told that he was hired on at the time and at that point is when we put him on the Brady list. How did you find out he was rehired? From you. Hiller Moore says that means his prosecutors would prefer not to call Officer Neldair as a witness in future criminal cases. That raises the question of how efficient an officer is if he or she cannot testify. We would take a chance on calling an officer and we'd have to be honest with the jury to say, I'm going to call this officer that has been factually found to be untruthful, but I'm calling him now and I'm telling you, I think he's telling you the truth. Yes, it makes me feel better that his word carries no weight, okay? But I don't, but that's not enough for me. If you can ask the police chief anything, what do you ask? What are you going to do about I guess I should say now, Officer now there, because I mean, he's back. Is it abuse if you ignore something and you see you see it there and, and you know it's not right? What do you want for to happen to Officer now? I want him gone. He shouldn't. He should not be on the force because somebody's 18 year old, soon to be 19 year old, or somebody's soon to be 18 year old son okay, is about to graduate this month, today's May 1st, okay, in a little while he's going to be out there, he needs to be gone because they could be the next Brandon. Does your son plan to stay at the Baton Rouge Police Department? I can't answer that. Butler's mother said her son can't speak due to Baton Rouge Police Department's policy against speaking with the media, and he would never violate protocol. She fears retaliation for her son because she decided to speak up, but she has made it very clear she was not only speaking as a mother. I'm talking administration and I'm talking police officers. I'm talking about if the police officers are having to walk, you know, they're good guys, good like they're doing the right thing. Why can't this do the right thing. You see what I'm saying? It's like, at some point, accountability comes into play. Who's gonna pay? Are they gonna pay here? Or are they gonna pay here? Obviously, obviously, bringing back now there, it leaves a lot of confusion. Here, here, and nothing is being said here. Who's gonna answer the questions of all of these folks here that wants to know, so we do this, 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 and this, and this is what we get, but then you bring something or someone in 
and tarnish all the good that we do, and then you reward them openly, it makes no sense. Now, we did reach out to Officer Nell Dare for that very first investigation we did, and he told us no comment back then. As for the Baton Rouge Police Department, they do not respond to any requests or interviews from Unfiltered with Kieran. It is why they do not have a comment in this report. With Unfiltered with Kieran, I'm Kieran Chawla.